Hi, this is Roland. Just stopping by to make a short video to tell you about my new book. If you like Madame Guillon, and you like uh, François Finerlo, and if, if you like um, writings by uh, A.B. Tozer, or Teresa of Avila, or St. John of the Cross, or Thomas Akempis, any of those kinds of uh, spiritual writings, well, then you'll like uh, this book, Contemporary Contemplation with Reflections on Miguel de Molinos. Now, many of you are familiar with a book called A Guide's True Peace. It's very popular. It's beautiful. But it has the writings of three authors, and one of them is Miguel de Molinos. So you may have been reading him, and you didn't even know that you were reading him. So what does he try to do? Let me read you what he says. I'm going to read just a little bit. He says, The experience of many years has convinced me one of, of the great necessity people are in of having the obstacles taken out of their way, the inclinations, affections, and allurements removed, which wholly hinder the course and obstruct the way to perfect contemplation. That's what we need, perfect contemplation. What is that? Well, it's, it's getting close to God. It's experiencing God in your life. So I was saying earlier that, that there is a background field that God, the way he made things is he had this, this tremendous force coming out that filled, that, like a tremendous force at unbelievable speed that came out and wound round and round with precession, like string winding around a ball of string. And it continues now, round and round and round, and the universe is expanding. That's what he did. And so for us, it's coming from all directions, from every possible direction it's coming, but you're not aware of it, except Let's say, for example, if you're uh, on a racetrack and you have one of those brand new Teslas, one of those real fast ones, and you step on the accelerator, wow, you go really fast. And then what do you feel? You feel a restraining force, don't you? You feel a pressure. Restraining. It, in other words, it, um, it's inhibiting or regulating the change in acceleration. That's what it does. Well, then you experience it. There it is. There's that force. Otherwise, you don't feel it. But it's there when you feel that. That's it. You also see it when you have a wheel spinning like a gyroscope and you try to push it a little to the side and it, and then it wants to be, it, it is dedicated to that axis. It's dedicated to the plane and the axis that's perpendicular to that plane. And then if you try to move it, it doesn't want to move. And then if you finally do get it to move, then it wants to stay at that one. That's that force again. And you can also see it with, uh, with light, where you can see, not feel it, but you can see the evidence of it. When you, when you turn on a little flashlight, you turn it on and instantly, light at 186,000 miles, what, per second? Just like that. It's amazing. Well, you don't really experience it, but you see it. But you experience it when you feel that, that gravity equivalent, they call it, but it is gravity. It restrains. So now you understand. So what you want to do is you want to experience God. Now, I'd, now I'll tell you one way that you can experience him. Just do something wrong. If, you have a, if you're close enough to your conscience, like you were when you were a little child, now you're so far from it, your conscience probably you don't even know it's there, or it feels just like anxiety. But when you were a little child, you were very close to God, close to your intuition. And when you did something wrong, like you got mad at your mommy, afterwards you felt bad. That's your conscience. Well, what that is, is your intuition. That, see, it, it, you, it, it tells you that you messed up. When you, when you strayed from it, it tells you. And not only that, but if you really 
followed your, if you really were close to your intuition, instead of just telling you that you messed up, it restrains you. It restrains you when you're about to do something that's not right or say something not right. It restrains you. That is from God. See? But it has a very positive side, and that is it also guides you. And it gently nudges you in certain directions. So you must find it. You, you do sense it sometimes, your intuition, but you need to sense it all the time and live according to it. And then you'll, it'll lead you to a safe life and a happy life and to true purpose. And you'll take one step at a time, just like an orchestra plays one note at a time, and your life will become a beautiful symphony. You have to find that intuition. And the way to find it is by learning to be still, which is what I teach with my meditation. But it's also what Molinos is trying to tell us about. He's trying to say that that he's trying to say that contemplation is not some high and mighty term that's for super holy people or priests or monks or cardinals or bishops or something. It's simply becoming still and experiencing God. Instead of running from it. See what we do is we try to run from it. We don't want the truth because the truth would begin to show us that we've been messing up. But when the day finally arrives that you're willing to admit that, you're messing, that you've messed up, then, uh, then you're ready to experience God. Not just as conscience. Yeah, first a little bit as conscience. But then as a very present help. And as love. See? It's like sunlight. The sun gives both light and warmth. And plants, they get, they use both the light and the warmth. They use what's in the sunlight and somehow it converts into beautiful flowers. And, see? So you must learn to walk in the spiritual light. You must find it and live in it. And then, like the plant, convert it into wonderful things, wonderful good deeds. And It'll be your guide. In, so I saw an, a quote yesterday. I was glancing through the new book. I just got it, incidentally. I ordered it so I could look at it. And now I can see what it looks like. It looks really cool. And Miguel Molinas was saying that St. Uh, that Bernard said that, that uh, the living properly is, is, is doing good and bearing evil. So in other words, you have to do what's right and learn not to resent other people. Learn to overlook their little mistakes, their little faux pas, their little in inconsiderations, their lack of understanding. You must learn to, uh, to over not resent them for that. And then if you have a chance to do to do something right, then do it. That's all. So it's very simple. But in order to live, uh, in to in order to live intuitively, see to know what's right. See, when you live intuitively, and you then you then you also act out of that intuition. You, something comes to you to say, you just say it, and it's right. Or nothing comes to you, and then you don't do anything or say anything. It's an intuitive way of living. And um, and, it's, and it's so simple. It's so beautiful. It's just like a bird knows how to build a nest. See, God gives animals instincts, but he gives humans intuition. So you have to find your intuition and then live that. And then when you do, then you'll have this inner light. And then you can read... Molinos. And you'll say, yeah, that's that's right. You'll see it. You'll see it and possibly because you experienced it or you already know. What he says is only is only confirming what you already know. Or maybe what he says awakens you. Awakens you to realize something in the inner light. You see? 
So it's very beautiful. So I'd like you for you to get the book if you're the kind of person that likes this sort of thing. It's on Amazon. And it's called uh, Contemporary Contemplation. You get you actually get two books. The one book is my short book called Contemporary Contemplation. But then you also get a complete edition of Molino's book, The Spiritual Guide. And I updated the language. I took a very I took a very nice edition of uh, of his book. But this nice edition was from long ago, and it has words like thee and thou and tis and tisn't and uh, like that. And what I did is I just changed those into, you know, modern English. It makes it easier to read. And I think you'll, uh, you'll find it um, helpful and uh, edifying and you'll, in you'll, you'll enjoy it if you like this sort of thing. So the book is on Amazon. It's in both quality paperback like this one here, which I think is very nice. And it's also in a Kindle edition, very reasonably priced.